Good evening, my dear colleagues. Today we will talk about two important disorders affecting the kidney, Porter syndrome and Gettleman syndrome. This is our agenda. I will talk about these two disorders in the same lecture because they have similar features and usually present by the same clinical picture. Both conditions, both diseases or both patients with postpartum and Gettleman will present by hypokalemia, metabolic alkalosis and normal blood pressure. These features are very important to remember because they are the initial or the presenting symptoms for your patients. Your patients, if you, if you face patients with hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis, you should check the blood pressure. If the blood pressure is normal, then you should think of Gettleman and Barter syndrome. Very important to remember, hypokalemia, metabolic alkalosis, and low normal blood pressure. Now, what about the Barter? Barter syndrome is an autosomal recessive disorder. It is an autosomal recessive affecting soul tree absorption in the sick ascending lobe of Henley. In the sick ascending lobe of Henley. So an autosomal recessive disease affecting the reabsorption in the lobe of Henley, especially in the ascending limb of the loop of Henley or in the transporters of, uh, transporters of loop diuretics, as we are going to say. What about the Gettleman syndrome? Gettleman also is an autosomal recessive condition. It is more common than barter, affecting or with a prevalence of around 1 in 40,000 population. And Gettleman is considered the most frequently inherited teopulopathy. So Gettleman is much more common than barter. What about the etiology and pathogenesis? We will start by barter syndrome. Barter, to remember from the start, Barter is called loop diuretic like, loop diuretic like, because it affects the transporter, which is also the target for the loop diuretic. Barter is mainly in the thick ascending loop of uh, thick ascending loop of Henley, thick ascending limb of the loop of Henley. Barter, we have four types, four types of Barter syndrome. The first one, or Barter syndrome type one, is due to mutations in the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter. Sodium potassium, from here, sodium potassium chloride co-transporter which is the transporter of sodium, potassium, and the chloride, which is the target for loop diuretics. So, Porter is called ferrosimide-like or loop diuretic-like. So, mutations in this transporter, co-transporter, will cause Porter syndrome type 1. Porter syndrome type 2 is due to mutations affecting the potassium channel, affecting the Romka channel, the Romka channel, which is mainly responsible for the potassium. Porter syndrome type C, uh, type 3, is due to mutations affecting the chloride channel, chloride channel. And Porter syndrome type 4 is due to mutations in the partin. Partin is the beta subunit, beta subunit here, beta subunit of the chloride channel. So again, type 1 is the 
due to mutations in the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter, type 2 in the affecting potassium, potassium channels, wrong, type 3 chloride channels, type 4 part in which is the beta subunit of the chloride channel. Again, the four main genes which are associated with parter, parter type 1, as we said, is the sodium potassium chloride, type 2, wrong channel for the potassium, type 3, chloride channels, and type 4, partin associated. There is also another disorder, is due to mutations in the calcium sensing receptors causing hypercalcuria and hypocalcemia, familial hypocalcemic hypercalcuria, which will cause a parter like electrolyte abnormalities, and it is sometimes referred as parter type 5. But our talk will be directed mainly for the first four types. What happens in parter? As we said, there is reduced chloride absorption with increased chloride in the urine. As you said, there is, in type 1, there is sodium, potassium, chloride co-transporter will be affected, so there is more chloride in urine. This will initiate signals causing enhanced or increased the prostaglandin production, and this is an important note characteristic of Parter, not in Gettelman, in Parter syndrome, there is increased prostaglandin E2 production, and with more sodium, as we said before, there is decreased sodium reabsorption. This will cause more sodium to be delivered to the distal tubules. This will activate the aldosterone and the RAS system. As we all know that aldosterone will cause sodium reabsorption and cause potassium and hydrogen excretion. So with more sodium reaching distal tubules, this will activate aldosterone, causing sodium reabsorption and getting out of potassium and hydrogen. And this, with more aldosterone action, causing, sodium, uh, causing potassium and hydrogen to go out in the urine, this will cause hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. So activation of the renin and the aldosterone will cause the typical features of hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. What about the Gettelman? What about the etiology and pathogenesis of Gettelman? As we said that barter is called a loop diuretic like, Gettelman is thiazide like, is a thiazide like because both the defect in the distal convolute view. And Gettelman is due to inactivating mutations, inactivating mutations in the SLC12A3 gene. Again, mutation is due to mutation in the SLC12A3 gene, which, we, which encode for the sodium chloride sodium chloride co-transporter sodium chloride co-transporter which is a cyanide sensitive transporter sodium chloride co-transporter again when there is loss of the sodium chloride function or co-transporter so this will lead to sodium and the chloride wasting with more, this will cause hypovolemia. And with more sodium reaching distal tubules, with, again, will cause activation of the RAS system. This will increase sodium reabsorption, counterbalanced or associated with potassium and hydrogen excretion 
causing hypokalemic alkalosis as we said before. Barter's barter is characteristic by hypercalcuria, but here in Gettleman, it is characteristic or characterized by hypocalcuria. Hypocalcuria, an important differentiating point between Barter and Gettleman. Hypocalcuria, why there is hypocalcuria in Gettleman? It is due to enhanced calcium reabsorption. Enhanced calcium reabsorption secondary to hypovolemia in Gettleman. And also in Gettleman, there is more hypomagnesemia. Another differentiating point with Barter. There is Gettleman is associated by more hypomagnesemia compared to Parter, and this hypomagnesemia is due to renal magnesium wasting due to downregulation of the magnesium channel in the kidney, which is called TRBM6, due to downregulation of the magnesium channel in the renal tubules. Now we'll talk about the clinical manifestations of both conditions. We'll start by parter. Parter, as we said, we have four types of parter. Type one, sodium potassium chloride. Type two, affecting the potassium channel. And part which is type four. These three types, type one, two, and four, usually have an earlier onset compared to the parter type 3, which is the chloride, affecting chloride channel. And the first three types, type 1, type 2, and type 4, usually occurs during pregnancy of causing what is called antenatal parter syndrome. But parter syndrome type 3 is usually called classic parter and it, is, it usually it occurs later in life, later onset, later onset, compared to the, the other three types. The clinical features will start by the antenatal parter, antenatal parter, especially, mainly we are talking about parter type one, as we said before, there is salt wasting, salt wasting, decreased reabsorption of electrolytes causing sodium, potassium, and chloride wasting. This will lead to hypokalemic alkalosis, polyuria, high urinary chloride excretion in a new pore associated with vomiting, and of course, failure to thrive and history of polyhydramnus and premature delivery. We can make a prenatal diagnosis of Parter by demonstrating that there is high chloride concentration in the amniotic fluid. So a prenatal diagnosis of Parter can be can occur by diagnosing high chloride concentration in the amniotic fluid. Parter syndrome type two which is affecting the potassium channels, can have some different phenotype from the, the previous common antenatal parter features. Classic parter, which is parter type 3, usually occurs later in life, in the first decade of life, and usually present this uh, child or these children present by vomiting, polyuria, recurrent episodes of dehydration due to salt wasting, and of course, hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. Some cases, some cases may present by hypomagnesemia, which can mimic, mimic El Gettleman. What about type four, parter type four? It is usually character, it is characterized by association with sensory neural deafness. Sensory neural deafness. Why is there a sensory neural deafness? Because this chloride channel, this chloride channel 
usually are present also in the inner ear and we said before that barter type 4 is due to mutations in the protein protein is the subunit of the chloride channel is the beta subunit of the chloride channel which are present in the ear and kidney so barter type 4 is usually associated with sensory neural deafness an important feature what about Gettelman? Clinical manifestations of Gettelman. Manifestations or symptoms in Gettelman, usually there is a wide variations, but most severely affected patients have a decreased quality of life. Again, we have a salt wasting state with hypokalemia, severe hypokalemia in some patients, severe hypokalemia, metabolic alkalosis and hypomagnesemia. So all manifestations will be related to these electrolyte abnormalities, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. So these patients usually present or complaining of muscle weakness, inability to work for a long period, salt craving and polyuria. And of course, some arrhythmias can occur due to hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia and tetany. Also, chondrocalcinosis and some calcifications can occur, and the laboratory investigations will reveal hypokalemic, hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis, hypochloremia, decreased chloride, and the characteristic of Gettelman, hypocalcuria and hypomagnesemia hypocalcuria and hypomagnesemia also it will be associated with increased increased as we said before we have a state of salt wasting there is increased urinary chloride urinary potassium and urinary magnesium and of course as we said before blood pressure will be in the low normal range low normal range what about diagnosis how we reach a diagnosis of Porter and Gettelman disease? You will start by hypokalemic alkalosis. You should only suspect or think of Porter and Gettelman in patients only in patients with hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. Again, if you face a patient with hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis, then you think of Porter and Gettelman. In patients with hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis, what, our, what is our next step to reach our diagnosis? We should check the blood pressure. If you found the blood pressure in the low normal range, and as you to salt wasting, then you should check chloride excretion, chloride excretion in urine. If you found that the chloride, the fractional excretion of chloride, fractional excretion of chloride is less than 0.5%, so it is mainly extra renal losses, especially in the GIT. But if you found that the fractional excretion of chloride is more than 0.5%, so it is mainly renal salt losses, and then your differential diagnosis will be a parter and the Gettelman. Parter, you will find hypercalcuria, and in Gettelman, you will find hypocalcuria and hypomagnesemia. So again, hypokalemia with metabolic alkalosis, low normal blood pressure, increased urinary chloride excretion, hypercalcuria, parter, hypocalcuria, hypomagnesemia. Gettelman. What about treatment? Patients or children with neonatal parter, usually they have severe polyuria, market fluid loss and electrolyte disturbances. So saline infusion may be required. Potassium chloride supplementation, potassium supplementation and chloride supplementation. Spironolactone or amyloride will correct 
or improve the hypokalemia and alkalosis, as we said in in the vasogenesis in Porter, we will found in activated or increased RAS system, renin and aldosterone, causing the hypokalemia and the metabolic alkalosis. So spironolactone and the myeloride can give some improvement, but take care of these patients have low normal blood pressure and with the use of spironolactone and myeloride take care of the blood pressure because you are at high risk of hypoglycemic shock the main the key problem in these salt twisting disorders is that these supplementations will increase the urinary loss at first and take care that swings swings in these levels of these electrolytes, especially the potassium, the swinging from high from different level to another level, this swinging is can be harmful. So the best protocol is to give small and more frequent administration of these supplementations so you can give these supplementations in a smaller doses and in a more frequent fashion in patients with antenatal parter as we said in parter there is increased prostaglandin e2 so we can give prostaglandin inhibitors and of course the most common is cox inhibitors especially endomethacin and selective cox2 inhibitors can have similar efficacy with less toxicity and this treatment will cause reduction of polyuria and polydipsia and improvement of growth so cox inhibitors can be given in parter syndrome especially in antenatal parter what about the Gettelman disease? Treatment of Gettelman. Again, Gettelman is salt wasting disorder. So the treatment will focus mainly in the electrolyte supplementations. The most important is potassium and magnesium supplementations. But take care that these supplementations of these two electrolytes can cause diarrhea and abdominal discomfort. So take care during these supplements. Uh, this supplementation some cases severe hypoglycemia can be treated with parenteral magnesium cox inhibitors used in parter are usually not helpful here in Gettelman and potassium sparing diuretics as used before in parter can be used here also in Gettelman but also take care of the blood pressure What about the prognosis? Prognosis, we will start by parter. Severe complications, severe complications like intracranial hemorrhage and the bronchopulmonary dysplasia are typically seen in patients with antenatal parter as a consequence of extreme prematurity. And also there is a spectrum of the severity of the electrolyte disturbance and severe complications like arrhythmias, paralysis, rhabdomyolysis, and apnea can occur due to severe hypokalemia, of course, mainly. But with treatment or supplementations and correction of these electrolyte deficiencies, usually there is improvement in the clinical features. What about the Gettel prognosis of Gettelman? The long-term prognosis for the heart and kidney and for the general health is good in Gettelman patients, but some patients can complain from impairment, impairment of, the, of their quality of life due to this, these electrolyte disturbances. To summarize, as we said, the inheritance of Parter syndrome is mainly autosomal recessive. Autosomal recessive and type 1 Parter syndrome type 1 is due to mutations gene affected here. The gene affected 
and this is the gene localization for each one. Type 1 Porter syndrome is due to mutations in the sodium potassium chloride, in type 2 in the potassium channel, wrong channel. Type 3 is a classic Porter in the, in the chloride channel, and type 4 in the beta subunit of the chloride channel, which is a protein and it is associated with the sensory neural deafness. And Gettleman also is an autosomal recessive condition. It is due to mutation in the sodium chloride transporter, and Gettleman is called thiazide like, and Porter syndrome is called loop diuretic or ferrosamide like. Again, to diagnosis, usually we suspect a patient with hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis and with low normal blood pressure with increased chloride excretion if there is hypercalcuria it is barter if there is hypocalcuria and hypomagnesemia it is gettleman treatment mainly is by salt supplementation is in both conditions but in porter cox inhibitors can give some can give some hope, especially in antenatal parter. This is a table of differentiation, differentiation between porter and Gettleman. As we said, porter syndrome, neonatal and the classical usually present earlier in life, neonatal, of course, and neonatal period, and the classic porter in infancy and children, but Gettleman usually later in life. Maternal polyhydramnus and polyuria and dehydration are usually more common in Porter and it is rare or absent in Gettleman. Growth retardation more in Porter because Porter is much more severe. Urinary calcium, of course, more in Porter. Porter is characterized by hypercalcuria, but the calcium is low in Gettleman, so hypocalcuria in Gettleman, it is very important. Nephrocarcinosis more in Porter. Serum magnesium, as we said before, it is a characteristic feature. Hypomagnesemia in Gettleman and hypocalcuria in Gettleman, but usually serum magnesium, usually it is normal in Porter. Also, urinary prostaglandins are very high in Porter syndrome and normal in Gettleman, and you, this will lead to that COX inhibitors or prostaglandin synthetase inhibitors can be used can be used in Porter, especially neonatal Porter, but rarely or not helpful mainly in Gettleman disease. This table is very important to differentiate between Porter and Gettleman. These are our sources, and thank you.